Okay, so for this part, what we do is we'll make the handrails go on the tops of the six inch gun turrets. So I've actually made uh, the six inch gun turrets previously. So as you can see on the roof, we've got the little white dots and they correspond to the the stanchions or the uprights of the handrails and that's where they'll locate uh, once we make them. So on the instructions you get the templates for making the handrails. So we've got two different styles here for right and left and it depends on the position of the hull where the turrets are sitting. So you've got the right, 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 which is P1 with a handrail gap in that position. And then the L, L, L is the other three with the, the gap in a handrail in that position. So I'll make three of each. Now it shows you the two, but they're both the same except one's got gaps here. And now there's gaps there, so I only need to work on one for all six, just bearing in mind where the gap is. The size here is say uh, 0.2 millimeters, which will be for the handrail, and 0.3 for the uprights or the stanchions. I don't have 0.2 in stock, but I do have 0.15, which I'll use instead. It just means it'll be slightly thinner, but that'll be, that'll be fine. So the next step is to make a jig to hold the, the stanchions vertically so we can attach the wire on the top. So I'm just going to use some 2mm thick card. So what I'll do is I'll place this behind the template and we'll mark the holes uh, and then we'll drill them. So if I put that down there, I come a wee bit this way, that should be on the, on the card. And then I'll just mark the holes with the, the airbrush needle and then we'll come back and drill the correct armor. So I've measured the uprights already and they're about 3.85 mil. I don't know if you can see that. What I'll do is I'll add an extra two mil to account for the, uh, the card jig that we'll make. So if I make this 5.85, that will be set now for the length of the, the stanchions. So when I come to cut the 0.3 mil wire, I'll just make them this, uh, this length here. Okay, so that's that done. So if we mark the positions using the template, we'll just, uh, pin prick through and these dots here they correspond to the white dots that you saw on tops of the turrets okay so that should be marked okay so you may be able to see the pin pricks but what I'll do now is I'll actually apply some thin super glue or CA glue because what will happen is that will uh, absorb into the card and stiffen it up. So when we come to drill the holes, it should be nice and firm and get clean holes. So you can probably see the hole, the pinprick's clearer now. Uh, with the super glue and then what we might have to do is just apply some from the back as well once we, we drill through 
and then that will give us a nice hard clean hole for the stanchions to sit in while we work on the tops. Okay, so we'll let this go off and then while that's doing, we'll prepare the, the wire for the verticals, stanchions and for the, the hand drill. So we'll, we'll do that next. So in a previous video, you may have seen uh, me having to anneal this wire uh, purely because it won't bend. Now, even though uh, this is a point three for the vertical stanchions, uh, I'm still going to anneal it because it will clean up the surface and then I'll be able to remove any oxidization or whatever for the soldering. So I'll just heat this up with the gas starch. Just give it a, a wipe with some fine sandpaper just to clean it up. Okay, so there's 12 of these in each hand rail, six hand rails, so we've got 72 of these to cut. So this is now set to the correct length which was 3.85 for the stanchion and then two mil for the, for the cardboard that will hold it. So what I'll do is I'll just trim with these fine wire snips. I'll just trim the end on one side and then I'll clean it up with a uh, diamond file because I, I want the tops to be flat so the the wire handrail sits on top of it because the snips will cut it into a V which will make, make it a bit uh, tricky so if we clean it up and then using Using the calipers, we'll cut it to length. Okay. So that's, I've lost it. Huh? So that's it done now. So I'll cut out the rest of them and then we'll come back and see the forming of the curved hand drill. Okay, so we should cut out some of the stanchions here and the super glue has gone off here. So now just, we need to drill the holes. So, using the pin vise, we just work our way down each one. Okay. So that's all the holes bored through. Now we can load it up with the stanchions. So that's a mullen. There's one I made a hole oversize and it keeps slipping right through. But that's okay. Uh, once we fix it, it will be held up in the correct position anyway. So, uh, so that's that ready. So the next thing to do is uh, yeah, it keeps falling off. So the next thing to do now is uh, form the, the hand drill. So we'll do that now. So the next step is to form 
the handrail itself. So for that we'll use the 0.15 uh, millimeter brass wire. So again, same deal. Just need to nail that. And we'll clean it up. So it's very thin and easily bendable or malleable. So we'll form it round directly onto the, the template here. So what I'll do is I get some masking tape and then we'll cut this into little strips because we'll use that to hold down the, the, the parts as we work along. It just holds a position so you can work on the next step area. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to keep the straights straight and the bends. Bend. So using tweezers, and I like these uh, eye plucking tweezers because they're long and flat, you can use it to manipulate the wire to suit. And then you can use these ones to bend. And also we then use the tape just to hold the wire down as we move around. So let's have a look at this then. Uh, just trying to get a good position. So we'll use this one here for the gap. So we'll start putting in a bit of a bend here. And if we hold that and move the wire by hand, we can start to form. So what we'll do is use the tape just to hold that onto the line. And again, I'll put another bit on. So that holds the straight section and then we can slowly manipulate the curve. And that's it. And then holding a wire here, we can start forming the curve round. Alternatively, you can just hold it and manipulate it. So it's looking a bit rough at the moment, but that's fine. We'll come back and we'll square. We'll straighten everything up. So.
So I put a bit of a kink in it there. And this is where this one comes in handy. So holding it flat and putting the kink right inside, you can squeeze it together and the kink forms back. Not too bad so far. And because this is a short straight section, we can hold that and we can grip. and use the tweezers flat to squeeze and bend in or out as you please. So that's looking good now. Now we'll start forming this curve just by, if you hold where you don't want it to move quite tightly down into the paper and then you can bend so again a wee bit of a kink it just straighten it slightly So remember, this is a gap between this post and this post here, so we can cut off the excess now. Might cut a wee bit short so it's not touching, okay. So I don't know how clear that was. Uh -huh. 
but as you can see that's the the wire formed around the line now so what we'll do is we'll just peel off each of the bits of masking tape and we'll have a look to see what we've got so you have to be careful here because the wire is so thin and if it sticks too much to the to the tape you can actually bend it which you now don't want to do because what we might do is just put one on each end and we'll leave that and also if I start from this end It's actually quite difficult to do because normally my head's right over it and I'm so tight in. But try to keep back so you can see. A bit hard. Okay. And you can see it's still springy, obviously, because. got the flat edges here and I don't know if you can see there's the, the gap there because it will be cut here and here anyway so the next stage now is to put this on to uh, onto the post that we've already cut out so that will take a bit of manipulation uh, purely because you're trying to balance them onto the little pegs so I might have to do a lot of this off camera only because I need to be right over the top of it to see but uh, you get the idea anyway and what I want to do is I want to actually try and solder these so I might just uh, might be able to do one or two I don't know if you can see that's actually up on one of the pegs. So if I can fix that, then the other ones won't be so inclined to to jump out. So let me do this up close and then I'll come and show you as I progress. I might actually use some uh, tape as well. See how that goes. Well, let me make a start and then we'll come back. Okay, so what I've done is, I'm not sure how clear this is. What I've done is I've found some packing foam and cut it just about the height of the posts. This allows the handrail to sit without dropping down. And then just using old blades to weight it down. I've kind of got these first three on this side in a position where I'll now attempt to solder it and then once that's kind of fixed I can then manipulate the remainder a lot easier so let's see if I can solder that three okay what I've done is I've just put a piece of a razor 
on there just to weight it down because it's a bit springy. Uh, for the flux, I'm going to use DCC Concepts Flux Liquid and just an old brush. And this is DCC's Sapphire 179 solder, I think. So what I'll do is, I think I showed this before, but I'll actually uh, cut slices off, like really small slices, and then, because uh, we don't need a great deal. You probably can't see that. I don't know if you can see that, but what I'll do is I'll probably half that again. So I've got one of them to melt. Which is better than nothing because it means of now at least it's fixed onto the at least one post. I'll go back and reset this uh, this other two here. Yep. Yep. Okay. So and that one. Yep. That's that's one good. So. I'll just uh, reset these two here. Okay, so I've reset that. Uh, I've got some more flux in some more things. So let me just put a bit of weight behind this. off so that three have uh, got my solder joints on so that three here so what I'll do is I'll probably do it off camera because I, I need to get right on top but I'll just work my way along each of these 
can work my way around as well. Okay. But you get the idea. I'm struggling with the sword and iron, it's my problem. It's just a, a cheap uh, trade one. So although it's getting the heat up, uh, it's just far too big to get in. The one with a small uh, nozzle, or tip I should say, it's just not getting the heat up. Okay, so let me finish all of these and then we'll come back and have a look. So I've finished the rest of the soldering. Uh, on the whole, not too bad, could be better. Uh, I went ahead and trimmed the gap as well. So let's see if we can release it. Some of them are tighter than others. I just want to work all the way around. I don't want to, if we lift one higher than the other, then we'll bend the hand real so Just easy, does it? Okay, that's coming up easy. This one here is the stiff one. Okay. Okay, so that's it for you anyway. So, this was an L1. Uh, so, I think I'll have to double check, but I think I was this turret here. So, it would sit on there like that. Obviously, it has to go in almost half as deep. So, the next stage will be similar to how we've done the, the other bits and pieces on the hull, which would be we'll pinprick each of the location marks. We'll pin these ones here and then we'll make the holes using the, the same uh, probe we used for the footsteps. And then we'll push that in. So again, I might do this off camera because I really need to see and get these in vertical, but make it pin pricks at locations and then come in, make the holes, and then I'll come back and we'll feed this in. Okay. Okay, so I've made the holes in the top of the turret. Uh, we'll just insert the a hand going up. So we just start at one end and then we'll just uh, we'll just work our way around.
So this one is a bit off the, the vertical, so it's kind of making it a bit tricky to uh, push it in. I, I don't want to force it in case I bend something, but it's kind of going in now. Some of the other ones are going in very easily. And this one here is a bit tight in the hole, but it is going in, here we go. So it's all in anyway. So what we'll do is just to set the gap, I'll use this foam. This one needs to come up. It's actually quite a high rail. Good, so what I'll do is I'll now put in some glue and uh, we'll lock that in position. So again, we'll use uh, Woodworkers PBA. And using some water, what we'll do is we'll just make a quite a runny consistency. And then we'll flow it down the, the hand drill. to the wood, ah, to the wood, to the turret. Now this one needs to come up slightly, so let's see if we can lift it up with the foam. And then we just have this last one here, which is really upsetting everything because of the, the bend on it. I think that's it. It's kind of as good as I'm going to get it, I think. I'll just apply some glue and see if I can hold it down. That's as good as it's going to go. I'm going to call this one done. I'll, I'll paint it next, but I guess lessons learned, or what I'll do is I'll make a new uh, jig for the stanchions here. 
because there was one or two just not perfectly vertical, which is kind of made it a bit wonky, I guess, but it's not too bad. Uh, yeah, that's, that'll be my next job. I'll make a new one and then we'll do the rest of them. So all that remains now is I'll give this a paint. And again, I'll use the uh, watercolours. So here's the watercolours we'll be using. You've probably seen these before in my other videos. Uh, So we'll just get it activated. It takes a bit of time to build up some colour on the in the brush. But once you get uh, once you get going it's it's pretty consistent. At the moment, it's too much water, so we'll keep keep working it. Again, you can use any black paint you want. Uh, for this, so as you can see, it's not a full black. So maybe something like Tamiya Neo Black or Tire Black would work just as well. Here we go, that's it, now picking up the colour better. So it's just a case of <clears throat> going round and round. So, so what I'll do next is I'll keep go back to the first ones and come in from the other side till they're fully covered. Problem I found with uh, brush paint and brass wire is it doesn't matter how many times you look at it and go round it, you always seem to miss one bit. Okay, so that's kind of it done. Mm, not too bad. Could be a whole lot better. I think the biggest issue is just like these verticals aren't 100% uh, vertical. But what I'll do is for the remainder, I'll make a new jig and take a bit more time uh boring all these holes like this one here was too big and that's the one it came time to solder it had a bit of play in it so it's moved about which is uh messed up the position of it and then that kind of has a knock-on effect to the others because it's always tensioned against something so but you get the idea anyway it's not just a case of practice makes perfect, I guess. Okay, thanks for watching.